Welcome to FOB TV, the future of business. I'm your host, Kevin Benedict. I'm a futurist here at TCS, and I want to welcome each of you to the show today. Our guest is a colleague of mine, Adam Boostrom. He's an author. He's a strategic foresight consultant here at TCS and a real futurist because he just wrote another paper called how AI will guide future M&A deals or mergers and acquisition deals. Adam, welcome to the program. Thanks so much for having me, Kevin. It's a pleasure to be here. So you write science fiction. Let me ask you, is this recent report closer to science fiction or fact? Kevin, it's science fact. It's science certitude. There is no limit to what it can do in terms of making predictions. And some predictions will be more or less valuable than others, but I don't see any reason to believe, given the latest progress that has taken place in the space with ChatGPT and Dolly and MidJourney and then the new Google program to translate text into music, it seems only a matter of time before we'll be using AI programs to predict all sorts of things, including which companies would be ideal m and targets. Wow, we're going to get into that one because that's fascinating to me. So let's start out by just talking a little bit, providing some context and background. Why are M&A deals notoriously tricky to actually make work? So if you think about a company, we both work at TCS. Yeah. There's 600,000 people. And the value of TCS as a company is the product of all of those people working together plus any existing relationships, sales relationships that the company might have, the brand perceptions that exist in the market, geopolitical factors. It's very complicated to say how much a company is worth or how much it could be worth in a different situation. So historically, Adam, how were M&A deals discovered and accomplished? I mean, how many companies are there? Millions of different companies out there. How does a company find a good potential acquisition or merger um, candidate. Lots of times you have investment bankers mixing and matching and you've got big wigs meeting in, in dark cloak rooms and you've got grunt analysts just churning through a bunch of numbers saying, okay, this company has these attributes and we think that means it'll be a good target to acquire and then sell off the pieces. It's worth more than it appears to be. How do you see AI really being helpful in that effort? What AI is all about is, is making accurate predictions and looking in the past and looking through vast streams of data and discovering patterns, patterns that humans aren't even capable of noticing. One of my favorite examples of this, they asked an AI to look at a bunch of pictures of, of human irises. And the AI could tell pretty reliably whether the irises were male or female. Humans, doctors, nurses, people in the medical profession, oculologists, Yes. Nobody knows. Nobody, no human knows what the machines are seeing when they do this. They don't know how the machines are able to tell tell male, male and female. But the machines know. They found something because they went through every pixel of these images that they saw. And they're able to see, okay, when we see the, this feature, and they can't tell us because AIs are very much a black box. They give you an output, but they won't explain why. They So they, they found some correlations. Like when these pixels are in this way, that means this gender. And it will be like that with M&A. You'll have, there are are attributes about companies. We didn't even talk about culture earlier, but company culture is a big one. There are going to be attributes where where everything looks good traditionally, where where you would say these two companies are in complementary sectors, and it looks like there may be some, for lack of a better word, monopolistic advantages by their their merging. Um, But then there's a, a culture clash. This, you know, one company, it's much more, individualistic and the other is much more hierarchical or whatever. And this is not something that the investment bankers or the investment grunts would be able to to tell, but uh, an AI looking at all of this data about these companies, looking at data about how long onboarding takes, how long people spend at a certain firm, how much promotion goes on for comes from within all of these things, you know, email sentiment analysis, looking at how people talk to one another and their other habits, an AI, a computer will be able to look at all of these things. And most of them are not going to be predictive about cultures going well together, but some will in ways that humans haven't thought about. And that's the real value 
of AI. So AI systems will only be as good as their data, Adam. So, I mean, there's there's far more private companies than public companies. And these guys don't always have a standard way of tracking all the information that somebody interested in the M&A deal would want to know. So how would AI handle that kind of complexity? Well, one thing I want to say about data and making useful models is that it's not uh, an either or. It's not digital like zero and one. It's not like, well, we we don't have enough data and now we do. We Now we have enough data. Like it's it's very much a gradual process. And the more data you have, the more accurate the predictions will be. But that doesn't mean that you can't make an effective model, a useful model with less data. Private companies are notoriously private. They're going to be private about their data. And I think we should expect many obstacles and roadblocks to be thrown in front of, of any M&A firm, any firm interested in, in pursuing intelligent M&A. The response to that will be to gather data whichever way you can. A lot of data is public or, or can be acquired through public means. There's a lot of open source data, famously, uh, an investment firm was, instead of waiting for quarterly financial reports for different retailers, they just took satellite pictures from space of the parking lot. There are going to be equivalents to that in this M&A data pursuit. There will be ways to find information, publicly available information that is a proxy for the more sensitive information that we really would prefer to have. Oh, that's, and, that's such an interesting use case that you pointed out, Adam, the ability to take pictures of parking lots month after month after month to gauge footfall or the traffic, foot traffic inside a store. And if they count far more, you know, 20% more cars in the parking lot this month than last month, they can extrapolate that into data. Absolutely. Oh, that's it'll, just, be, it'll be like that for, for culture. Like you think about glass door, that's an example of a firm yeah. that's taking internal information about how employees feel about a company and making it publicly available. Uh, that's so fascinating. So another point that you made in your article is the following. Countless potential M&A deals failed to be discovered. So from a discovery standpoint, walk us through how AI might help you discover somebody that would add value if you were to acquire them. Employees can only look at, at so much data. Humans can only look at so much data. There are millions of companies. Um, maybe there's a, a real estate investment firm that primarily invests in the United States. They only look at a few thousand companies that are in their reg- geographical area. Um, and they only have the, the human resource ability to analyze those companies. But if you had an algorithm, that could look at millions and millions of companies, could look at ostensibly all the companies on earth above a certain size, then they could analyze companies in Europe, analyze in in Asia, EMEA, all over. And you could say, these companies that we never would have even looked at before, because this is so far out of our scope, this actually is an ideal target for us because there's a company, say there's a company in Southern France that is exactly like the company that we bought in North Carolina that we turned around using these three three steps that we have that you know we have access to yeah. for whatever reason and this company in southern france is exactly like this other one in the ways that matter that we would never even have looked at before we didn't even understand that these were the important ways in terms of what we could the value that we could add and then we go and acquire that or they go and acquire that yeah. company in in southern france that they they wouldn't have seen before so that's that's sort of how i imagined that so you talked about, I mean, you just mentioned the uh, a hypothetical use case about finding a previous uh, merger or acquisition that was successful. So then looking similar examples or similar opportunities that you could take advantage of. Seems like that's a, a good example of machine learning. Like how do you train your AI to actually be successful? Do you have any thoughts on how that might actually be accomplished? It's very simple. You train a model by giving it a bunch of data. You say, you know, just think about um, a simpler version. Think about a, a visual machine learning model that's trying to determine if a picture is of a dog or not. Yes. And so you show it a bunch of pictures and some are labeled dog and some are labeled not dog. And then you ask it to classify. You say, okay, is is this a picture of a dog? And it, it goes yes or no. And then it sees 
by looking at all this past training data, it sees, okay, this is what makes a picture of a dog a picture of a dog. And, and it learns what the difference is. But, but what that requires is a lot of training data. And then you don't have to do a whole lot else. You don't have to teach it. It'll teach itself, but it needs many, many, many examples of this is dog, this is not dog. And to train an AI to look at mergers and acquisition targets, it's the same, except instead of dog, not dog, it needs to be company that was acquired merger was successful, merger was not successful. Given the speed with which companies are recording and quantifying their capabilities, given the huge amount of data that all organizations are producing and saving right now, I that's why I believe it's inevitable that AI will be used in this way in the M&A space. So what are the obstacles that still lie in our way between accomplishing today and accomplishing that as a routine process? Data. You got to have you got to have a lot more data, and it's got to be labeled data. Mm. Uh, well, the the only label that's really needed in this case, actually, let me take that back. The only label that's needed is whether the M and A deal was successful or unsuccessful, and everything else, the AI will figure it out. So, one of the areas that's notoriously hard to do is valuations. So, somebody said, "Look, I have this IP, this archive uh, of IP." And I think it's going to change the world and it's a trillion dollar valuation for my IP. I mean, how would, walk me through, given what we know about what AI needs and machine learning, how would we just go about starting to put a valuation on potentially earth shattering technology? AI makes predictions, but it's not infallible. Right. And there are going to be paradigm shifts that are are new scenarios that do not match anything that occurred in the training data. Mm. And in those scenarios, the AI will get it wrong. That being said, with that caveat, what you would do is you would, like you said before, you'd look for proxy information. So if you're talking about IP, say you're talking about a new process that's been developed at a firm. And because the process hasn't been put out into the marketplace, we don't know what its value is. But we do know there's still things we do know and that we can see about it. We can see how much money was put into the development. We can see who, which firm was doing the developing. You can see the amount of attention that it's been getting, buzz that's been generated about it. You can look at at internet conversations that are taking place that are discussing it. So you can see, are any of these things going to be predictive of value? I don't know. I, I mean, I would think, I would be surprised if internet buzz, a lot of people talking about a potential development being released, if that is not predictive of eventual success or or value in that product. And you just try to get enough data from enough different directions until eventually uh, what you have correlates strongly enough with what you want to know that it's like you have the same thing. Fascinating topic. I want to thank you so much, Adam, for sharing your insight. The report again, and that's on TCS.com somewhere, right? It is. And it's called How AI Will Guide Future M&A Deals. If you want to get into the details, go to the website, TCS.com, do a search on that, find it and download it. Thank you very much, Adam. Contact me directly. Happy to speak to anyone. People can find me on LinkedIn.